Talk us through the first half uh, in terms of the numbers. Well, morning, Manus. It's been a pretty good six months, actually. I mean, what we've seen is operating profit that's up 11 per cent. EPS is up 15 per cent, and that's driven by some pretty good top line results coming down and dropping down to the profit. Now, it's geographically and product, it's pretty broad base, which is good to see. So, for example, life insurance, that's up 27 per cent. That's helpful. Uh, general insurance is up 17 per cent. France is up, Poland's up, Turkey's up. Uh, if you look at Asia, that's up. China, in fact, has doubled in its sales. You put all that together, we've got plenty of cash flow, plenty of capital, and we've also put the dividend up 13%. So hopefully investors will like it. OK, so a lot of positives to point out there then, Mark. Good morning to you. Um, looking at what you've done with the first half of this year, you've done a lot of transformation. The first half uh, very much has been about transformation, about getting out of assets you didn't want anymore. Give us some uh, big picture thinking here, though. Is all of that done? Are you done with that? Do you, do you leave the transformation story alone in the second half of the year? Well, we're certainly in a finished the fixed phase of the business. That's what we've done. And now we've moved into transforming the business models. We want to reinvent some of the insurance market, and we appear to be doing that. Our IP and our digital garage is sort of leading edge. We've sold off a lot of our lower quality franchises, and I'm very happy with what we have left. What are we going to do? Well, we've got a fair chunk of capital and cash sitting there. We will do some bolt-on acquisitions. Uh, we'll pay down some debt, as shareholders have seen this year. We'll also look at giving more back to shareholders. And we've done all of that in the last 12 months. You know, we're developing a bit of a rhythm here. Uh, and I just want it to be consistent. I want it six months after six months, just keep on delivering, and then we'll do just fine. Mark, if we, if we focus in on the two things that you want to do, one is dividends and one is debt, I mean, you've said, and the last time we were together, you said, look, my priority is I'm going to switch out, I'm going to just pay down some more expensive debt. But if I say to you as the CEO, is it a balance between the debt and the dividend, where is the priority? Yeah, it's a good question, of course, and the answer is it all depends. It's, it's simply a, number, a matter of economics. We believe we have enough excess capital. Remember, we're at 193 per cent, and our target's somewhere in the range of 150 to 180 per cent of our solvency targets. And so uh, we believe we can do a bit of everything, we have this year. So we believe we'll pay down some expensive debt, and we do have some expensive debt. We'll give some back to shareholders. Um, but the dividend comes out of the operating earnings growth. That's why I'm putting the dividend up, uh, because it's been a pretty strong first half. I want to ask you, Mark, about something I know you've, uh, you, you've uh, been outspoken on before, and that is the Ogden rate. Uh, this, of course, the, the big uh, cut that we saw in the discount rate uh, for certain injury claims in the United Kingdom. You've been outspoken about the way that that was done. Do you think that the UK government needs to review this, and over what time scale? What are your expectations? Well, Anna, it, uh, I have been outspoken because simply it's been a random piece of policy making, and, it's, and the only person who really gets hurt is the consumer. Um, like young drivers could pay about a thousand pounds more for an insurance premium, and older drivers above seventy, three to five hundred pounds more. And I think that's unacceptable. Now, I'm delighted to say the government has been engaging. They've said they're going to come out with a new methodology. Um, you know, I wait with bated breath. You wait with bated breath for, for that to be delivered. Um, we could be waiting for some time uh, in terms of delivery from this government. Our last guest called the UK economy a slow motion slowdown, uh, a slow motion slowdown, uh, not a chronic uh, or cataclysmic moment in the UK economy. I know that you've written an op-ed on Brexit. How would you describe where we are in the Brexit negotiations, Mark, as you look at the political flow and how it's impacting your business, if at all? Well, it, Brexit doesn't impact us too much, and we're very much a self-help store, and I think in times of uncertainty, people tend to gravitate to some of the good brands. But I think the economy is subdued. We picked that. Uh, we don't think it's going to go into recession, and, uh, but it is going to be subdued for some time. But as for how long, depends on what the government does. The government is starting to engage finally with business. They are certainly asking the right questions. Whether they have the right answers depends on what policy they come up with. And frankly, to date, we just haven't seen any policy. And we're uh, all what? looking. Um, I believe we do need a transition, and we need a transition for two years.
Yes, I was going to ask you about the transition. Is Would two years be long enough? Because I guess you, you might say Brexit doesn't impact the business too much, but of course, from a market sentiment perspective, we'll be very interested in some kind of, uh, in, in avoiding too much volatility, perhaps. Um, so what kind of transition? So two years, you say, and what does it need to look like? Yeah, well, therein lies a big question. I know there's a lot of work going on. Um, I think two years, uh, anything shorter really is, is just not meaningful enough. Uh, anything longer and people won't make the choices they need to make. Uh, I do think the transition is going to be different in different sectors, and I think the government should be looking sector by sector and saying what, uh, what that means. Uh, but first of all, they need to put a stake in the ground and say this is their policy, then we can get down to something concrete. Yeah, we've had a long time since the referendum. So far, nothing has happened. We need to progress. The voice of business needs to be front and centre. In the election, it was sadly missing. And it's business that can help the economy and the economy that can help consumers in the UK. I think it's that simple.